we have been asked to write the following numbers in order of size and we have been asked to start with the smallest number and the total marks for this question is one so the way we're going to solve this one is we're going to look at the first number after the decimal place okay so in this case 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 so now we need to look at the second decimal place so 0 0.32 0 0.35 and 0 0.30 0 0.30 0 is smaller than 0 0.32 and 0 0.35 so this comes first 0 0.3 309. Next, we go for the next smaller, so between 0 0.32 and 0 0.35, 32 is smaller, then 0 0.35, and finally 0 0.4. This question is worth one mark, and you get one mark for the answer as I have given here. We are told here is a list of numbers, okay? So the numbers are 5, 11, 18, 22, and 29. We have been asked from the list, write down a multiple of three, and this question is worth one mark, okay? So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down all the multiples of three, okay? So, these are three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, and thirty. And we can stop at 30 because our largest number in our list is 29, so we don't need to consider any more multiples above that. And the main advantage of doing this is now we can go through our list and find out which numbers are in our multiples of 3 list. And if they're not, that means they're not a multiple of 3. So is 5 in our list? No. So 5 is not a multiple of 3. Is 11 in our list? No. So um, we can cross out 11. Is 18 in our list? It is. So we're just going to put an underline underneath it. Uh, let's check the rest of them. Is 22 in our list? Nope. And is 29 in our list? Nope. So that means the multiple of 3 is going to be 18. This question is worth one mark, and you get one mark for an answer of 18. We have been asked to write 4.66 correct to the nearest whole number, and this question is worth one mark. So to... Um, round a number to the nearest whole number, what we need to do is we need to look at the first decimal place, which is also known as the tenths, like this, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at 4.6, looking at the first 6. The rule we have to follow is if the uh, number we are looking at is greater than or equal to 5, okay, we will round up, and if the number is uh, less than 5, we round down, okay? From here, we will be uh, rounding up because uh, 6 is greater than 5, and therefore... Uh, the value is rounded to uh, 5, so rounded to 5, because the 4.666, etc. rounds up to 5. So we can write 5 in our answer space. This question is worth one mark, and you get one mark for the correct answer of 5. We have been asked to write 3 quarters as a decimal for one mark, okay? So, what we're going to do here is... 3 quarters, we're just going to rewrite this as being 3 times 1 over 4, okay? Now, a quarter is a, a fraction you should be able to convert, and that is 0 0.25. So what this is, is 3 times 0 0.25, okay? And 3 times 0 0.25, what we can do is we can just add them as a column like this. 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. 5, we carry the 1. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. Plus 1, we put 7. Nothing to carry 0 0.75. So, it's an answer of 0 0.75. For this question, you get 1 mark, and the 1 mark comes from giving 0 0.75. We have been asked to write down the value of the 7 in the number 8,765 for 1 mark. Okay? So, we're just going to break this down. This is 5 units. This is 6 tens. This is uh, 7 hundreds. And this is 8 thousands. So, the value of the 7, it's in the hundreds place, so that means it has a value of 700. 
This question is worth one mark, and you get one mark for an answer of 700, as I have given here. Uh, you will also get the mark if you have written seven and then hundreds, uh, like I have written here. We are told Jeter spins a fair eight sided spinner. Partly has said on the probability scale, mark with a cross the probability that the spinner will land on C. And this part is worth one mark. Okay? So, the reason it's important that they've told us it's a fair spinner is it means it is not biased. Okay? So, it will not favour one of these triangles more than the rest. Okay? So, now what we need to do is we need to work out the probability of getting a C. Okay? So, what we can say is the probability of getting a C is the number of Cs divided by um, the number of options. Okay? Number of options. The number of Cs is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, there are 4 Cs. So, it's going to be 4 divided by, and the number of options is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4 over 8, okay? And this simplifies to a half if you divide the numerator and denominator by 4. So, now with a cross, we can mark a half like that, okay? This uh, part, sorry, is worth one mark, and you get uh, the mark for putting a cross at a half, as I have done here. Part B has said, on the probability scale, mark with a cross the probability that the spinner will land on D. And this part is worth one mark, okay? So, it's going to be the exact same thing. The probability of landing on D equals the number... Let's just rewrite that, sorry. Number of Ds divided by the number of options, okay? If we come back to our spinner, the number of Ds we have is zero, okay? So it's going to be 0 divided by, again, the number of options is 8. And this means we have a final answer of 0. And so we're going to put a cross at 0 like that. This part is worth 1 mark, and you get 1 mark for a cross at 0, as I have done here. We have been told the incomplete pictogram shows information about the number of eggs sold from a farm shop on Monday. Okay? We're told on Monday, the shop sold 18 eggs, on Tuesday, the shop sold 24 eggs, and on Wednesday, the shop sold 27 eggs. We have been asked to use this information to complete the pictogram of the key, and this question is worth four marks. Okay? So, the way I'm going to interpret this uh, pictogram is I'm going to interpret it as these sort of uh, quarter ellipses, okay? And the reason I'm going to do it like this is because they have split the ellipsis into quarters, which probably means somewhere down the line we will need to use a quarter ellipse, okay? So having the quarter ellipse as part of the key makes more sense. Okay, so let's look at Monday. We have 18 eggs. Now let's count how many quarters we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So we have six quarter circles, so six quarter ellipses actually sorry they're not circles equals 18 eggs okay now to get how much one quarter ellipse is we divide both sides by six so one quarter ellipse equals three eggs okay so this will equal three eggs okay then so on Tuesday, the shop sold 24 eggs, okay? So, what we're going to say is that the number of ellipses on Tuesday, so let's just do Tuesday like this. We know that one quarter ellipse is going to be three eggs, like that. And so, 24 eggs. First, we need to work out what we... Um, multiply by 3 to get 8 and the way we find this is by doing 24 over 3 which equals 8 so therefore we will be times them by 8 so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this side by 8 as well so times 8 so we have 8 quarter ellipses okay for uh, 24x like this, okay? Now, what we can do is we can 
uh, draw this, okay? So, a quarter ellipses, I'm going to draw one full like this, and then I'm going to draw another full like this, okay? Because a quarter ellipses, if each one has four, it means we have two full ellipses. Now, we're going to look at Wednesday, okay? So, for Wednesday, oops, I've got the A, uh, again, we know that one quarter ellipse is three eggs. On Wednesday, we need 27 eggs. So what we need to do is we need to work out what we um, multiply by three to get 27. So the way we find this is by doing 27 over three, which equals nine. So therefore we multiply both sides by uh, nine, sorry. So times this side by nine. And then what we will end up with is um, nine quarter ellipses, okay, is 27 eggs. Now, what we will do is we will first draw one, so we now have four. We'll draw another one like this, eight, and then we will draw one more quarter like that to form our nine quarter ellipses, okay? This question is worth four marks. The first mark comes from deducing a, a relation between the number of ellipses and the number of eggs. So in this case, we've shown that one quarter ellipse represents three eggs. So this gets us our first mark. Um, our second mark comes from getting two ellipses for Tuesday, as I have done here. The third mark comes from getting two and a quarter ellipses for Wednesday, as I have done here. And then your fourth mark comes from a correctly represented key, so as I have written up here. We have been given a coordinate system um, here, okay? Part A has asked us to write down the coordinates of the point A for one mark, okay? So point A, uh, coordinates first are given as x, y. So the x coordinate is 2 and the y coordinate is 3. Okay, so it's going to be point two, three, like this. Um, this is worth one mark, and you get one mark for the answer as I've given it here. Part B has asked us to write down the coordinates of point B. Okay, so let's come to our graph. Point B, the x uh, coordinate is zero because it hasn't moved anywhere on the x axis. The y coordinate is minus one. So the coordinates are zero, minus one. For this part, you get one mark as uh, for the correct answer as I have given here. Now, part C has said, on the grid, mark with a cross the point minus 2, 1 and label this point C for one mark. Minus 2, 1 means we are going minus 2 on the x-axis and 1 on the y-axis. So we have minus 2, 1. Okay, so up here, point C. And for this part, you get one mark for a point at minus 2, 1. We are told a bag contains red counters and blue counters only. The number of red counters to the number of blue counters is 3 to 4. Part A has asked us to write down the fraction of the counters that are red for one mark. Okay, So the fraction of counters that are red is going to be the number of red counters divided by the number of counters as a whole. Okay? The number of red counters from our ratio is 3, and the number of counters as a whole is 3 plus 4, which equals 3 over 7. So we can write 3 over 7 in our answer space. This part is worth one mark, and you get one mark for an answer of 3 over 7. Part B has asked us to write the ratio 12 to 30 in the form 1 to n for two marks. Okay? So, if we begin with 12 to 30, and we want to get it in the form of 1 to something else, we know on the left-hand side, we are uh, dividing by 12. This means on the right-hand side, we need to divide by 12 as well, okay? So, what this means is that n will equal 30 divided by 12, okay? We can set the, do this using uh, division, so 30 into 12 like that. First, how many 12s go into 30? Well, that's 2. 2 times 12 is 24. 
remainder of 6. We will bring down a 0 here at a decimal place. 16 to 12 is 5. 5 times 12 is uh, 60. And overall, that leaves a 0. So our answer is 2.5 as such. Okay? Now, we just need to write our final answer, and we need to write it in the form 1 to n. We haven't been asked what is n, we need to write it as 1 to n. So therefore, we're going to write this as 1 to 2.5. This uh, part is worth 2 marks. The first mark comes from knowing that you need to do 30 divided by 12, as we have here. And the second mark comes, for, uh, comes from writing it in this correct form as 1 to 2.5. We are told that Jenny has 12 marbles, okay? A quarter of these 12 marbles um, are large, and the rest of the 12 marbles are small. Each large marble has a weight of 70 grams, and each small marble has a weight of 50 grams. Work out the total weight of 12 marbles, and this question is worth 4 marks, and notice we need to give our answer in grams. So, um... First, what we're going to do is we're going to work out the number of large marbles. Okay, so from here, we will say the number of large marbles, okay, is going to be 1 over 4 times 12, which equals 3. Next, we are going to work out the number of small marbles, okay, and this is going to be 12 minus 3, which equals 9, okay. We know that we now know that each large marble has a weight of 70 grams. Okay, so the total weight, so weight of large marbles is going to be the number of large marbles times the weight of each large marble. Okay, sorry, weight of large marbles marble okay substituting the values we have the number of large marbles is three the weight of each one is 70 and then three times 70 well that's three times seven times ten which is 210 grams okay let's just include our units here now we are going to find the weight of small marbles okay and this is going to be the number of small marbles times the weight of small marble okay the number of small marbles as we found is 9 so it's going to be 9 times and each small marble has a weight of 50 grams 9 times 50 grams which equals 450 grams because you have 9 times 5 which is 45 and then the 45 times the 10 is 450 grams so the total weight okay can be found by doing um, the sum of the weight of the large marbles plus the weight of the small marbles as such okay this equals 210 grams plus 450 grams okay a bit of column addition on the side like this, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 5 is 6, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So we are looking at a total weight of 660 grams, and we can just put 660 as our final answer, like this. So for this question, you get four marks. A first mark comes from a process to work out the number of large and small marbles, as we have done here. Your second mark comes from uh, working out the weight of the large marbles, as we have done here. Now, if you worked out the wrong number of large marbles, um, just make sure that your final weight is correct for that. So you've done whatever you got as the large number uh, times 70, and you'll get the mark for that. Um, or you can work out the number of small marbles either way. Um, your third mark comes from knowing that you need to uh, sum the weight of small and large marbles as we have here. And your fourth mark comes from getting the correct answer, 660, as I have given here. We have been asked to reflect the shaded shape in the mirror line for two marks. Okay, so we have our mirror line here, which is a uh, vertical line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to map each of our vertices to where it should land okay and by that i mean let's start off with this point here 
okay? We can see that it is one, two away from our mirror line, okay? So this means it will be one, two away on this side. It will land here. This one is three away, so it will be three away here. This one is four away, so it will be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that, okay? Uh, this point here is one, two, three, so one, two, three, like that. This point is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like this. And at this point, we've gotten all of our uh, vertices mapped, and all we need to do is join them up, okay, in the same way that they are joined up on our right-hand side. Okay, now in the exam, you should really do this with a ruler, but I don't have a ruler uh, on my tablet, so we're just going to freehand it. We have a vertical line here, which is for this vertical line here. We have a horizontal line here for this horizontal line. Vertical, horizontal, sorry, vertical, horizontal. And then we're going to have a diagonal line from this vertex to this vertex, something like that. Okay, so this question is worth two marks. Your first mark comes for a uh, correct reflection of the shape in any line or a correct reflection of at least three vertices. We've done that, so we get our first mark and then the second mark comes from a fully correct shape, which we have done, so we get our second mark like this. We are told the diagram shows a number machine. Okay, so we have an input, gets multiplied by two, subtracted three, and then we get the output. We need to find the output when the input is seven for one mark. Okay, so find the output when the input is 7 for one mark. Okay, so we will start off. 7 times 2 is 14. 14 minus 3 is 11. Therefore, very simply, our output is 11. You get one mark for this part and one mark for a correct answer of 11. Part B has asked us to find the input when the output is 41 for two marks, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite our function uh, generator as a uh, equation, okay? So we do two times the input and we minus three, okay? So we're gonna say for an input n, the output equals two n minus three. Okay, in this case, we know our output is 41. So we say that 41 equals 2n minus 3. We add 3 to both sides, so we get 44 equals 2n. Okay, and uh, what I've done is I've added 3, and I have added 3. And then we divide both sides by 2, so we get that n equals 44 over 2, which equals 22. Okay. I shall just write underneath, which equals 22. And what I've done in this case is I've divided by 2, and I have divided by 2. This means our final answer is 22, and so our input was 22. So this part is worth two marks. Your first mark comes um, from either uh, finding the input using inverse of operations, um, explicitly stating that you're adding 3 and dividing by 2 somewhere, or deriving an equation, which we have done here. So this will get us our first mark. And then the second mark comes from uh, getting the correct final answer of 22. We are told the diagram shows two points, A and B, on a map. Okay? Notice here we're told the diagram is accurately drawn. Okay? This means that the uh, relative distances and scales will be applicable to the question. We are told the scale is 1 to 25,000, so for every one unit on our question paper is 25,000 units in real life. Part A has asked us to find the bearing of B from A for one mark, okay? So, what this means is we are going to uh, start at A and go to B, okay? So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to draw a sort of a very uh, quick line connecting A and B, something like this. Okay, obviously you want to draw this with a ruler in the exam. Um, so we're going to start at A and go to B. So this is our line A, and to go to B we need to rotate by this angle here, which is going to call that theta. Okay, so this angle theta is our bearing of B from A. And if you are to use a protractor, you will get that theta equals 25 degrees. Okay, now, that 
is part of the answer, so 25 degrees. But because bearings have to be written as uh, three figures, okay, so we always need three digits to form our bearing, we will have to preface it with a zero. Okay, so our actual answer is zero to five. This question is worth one mark, and you get one mark for a correct answer of 0 to 5. Um, the mark team has also accepted if you don't put a 0 in front of it, but uh, as common practice, you should, because the bearing is three digits. Part B has asked us to work out the real distance between A and B, and we have to give our answer in kilometers for three marks, okay? So, to do this, we need to start with a measurement of A to B, okay, on our paper, okay? Um, I've measured this, and this is going to be 5 centimeters. So we're going to say length A, B equals 5 centimeters, okay? Now, if we're going to convert 5 centimeters um, using our scale, okay, we're going to have to set up a ratio, okay? So I'm just going to come down here, I'm going to say 1 um, maps to 25 uh, oops, there's a dot there, 1,000, like this. So we have 5. So the way this is going to be is 5 times 25,000. And the reason is we multiply by this side, this side by 5. So we need to multiply this side by 5. Okay? So let's just set up a quick column multiplication. 25,000 times by 5, like that. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 5 is 25. So we write down the 5 and we're going to carry the 2, 5 times 2 is 10, plus the 2 is 12, so it's 125,000 centimetres, okay? To convert this to metres, we're going to divide by 100, okay? So we're going to say 125,000 centimetres equals um, 12, no, 1,250 meters like that because all we're doing is dividing by 100 so one two and then to convert 1250 meters into kilometers we're going to divide by a thousand so it's going to go one two three it's going to be 1.25 kilometers okay so 1.25 like that so this question is worth three marks the first mark comes from a correct measurement of a b okay so as we have um, here, you will get the mark for anything between 4.8 centimeters to 5.2 centimeters. Uh, you could have also measured it in millimeters, but that just makes the math a bit uh, longer. Your second mark comes from using the scale factor to correctly convert uh, your 5 centimeters uh, by multiplying by 25,000. Okay, so as we have done here. And your uh, third mark comes from a uh, answer in the range of uh, 1.2 to 1.3, okay, so, you know, getting 1.25 kilometers uh, as our final answer like this. Um, if you used a different value instead of 5, so like 4.8 or 5.2 in that range, you will get a slightly different final answer, but as long as it's between 1.2 and 1.3, uh, you'll get the mark. We are told Ishmael asked 30 students at college to tell him the sport they each like from the, uh, the best from cricket or tennis or swimming. 11 of the 20 female students said swimming, 2 male students said tennis, and 5 students said cricket. The number of male students who said cricket was the same as the number of male students who said swimming. We have been asked to complete the two-way table for three marks. Okay, so first thing I'm going to pick out is... Um, we can fill in the, van the uh, two way table sorry, from the information we've been given. So, 11 of the 20 female students said swimming. This means altogether there were 20 female students, and 11 of them said swimming like that. Two of the male students said tennis. Well, we know that there are two classes of students, male and female, which means that the number of male students has to be 10, okay? Because you have the total minus the number of female students, 30 minus 20 is 10. Uh, we know that two of the male students said tennis, so we can put two here. Now, let's look at what else we can fill out. And we're told that five students said cricket. Okay, so we have five students like that. Now, the number of male students who said cricket was the same as the number of male students who said swimming. Okay, so if we're just going to call this one X, and we're going to find it later. Okay, let's put it in brackets. 
So, male students, we know that uh, x plus 2 plus x equals 10, okay? From here, x plus x is 2x, so this means that we get 2x, uh, let's rewrite that, 2x plus 2 equals 10, 2x equals 8, and what we've done is we've subtracted 2 from both sides, and then rearranging this, we get that x equals 4, uh, dividing both sides by 2. Okay, so the number of male students who like cricket is 4, and the number of male students who like swimming is 4. The number of female students who like cricket has to be 5 minus 4, which is 1, because this needs to total to 5. The number of swimming, uh, uh, students who like swimming as a whole is 4 plus 11, which is 15. And now the total number of female students who like swimming, so we're going to call this one y, is we're going to say that... 1 plus y plus 11 equals 20. 1 plus 11 is 12, so we're going to have 12 plus y equals 20, and we have y equals 8. And what we've done in this case is we have subtracted 12 from both sides, like this. Okay, so let's remove the y and call this one 8. 2 plus 8 is 10 like this, and let's just check this also makes sense. 5 plus 10 is 15, 15, 15 is 30. Okay, so that's just a little check we can do uh, to make sure all our numbers add up. So, this uh, question is worth three marks. You get uh, one mark for two correct entries. Um, you get a, another mark for using the rule that 10 males minus 2 males divided by 2 equals 4. So, this Arithmetic we've out here, so it gets you your second mark, the first two entries get you your first mark, and then a third mark comes for a complete correct table. Now we have got a complete correct table, so I'm just going to award the two marks like this. We are told that Jamil makes a drink by mixing one part of orange squash with nine parts of water. He uses 750 milliliters of orange squash. Jamil is going to put the drink he has mixed into one liter bottles. Work out the greatest number of one litre bottles that Jamil can completely fill, and this question is worth three marks, okay? So, the first thing is, we're going to uh, find how much water is used. So, one, uh, how much water is used. So, okay. we know that the ratio of orange squash to water is one to nine. Okay, so if he uses 750 milliliters of orange squash, we need to work out how much uh, water he uses. Okay, so uh, how many milliliters of water, sorry, he uses. So to get from one part to 750, you multiply by 750, like this, which means we need to multiply nine parts by 750 to find how many milliliters of water he uses, okay? So, what we will say is that this uh, question mark equals nine times 750 milliliters, okay? I'm just going to do the uh, column multiplication here, so times like this, and we have our carry value. So, nine times zero is zero, 9 times 5 is 45, so we write the 5 down and we carry the 4. 9 times 7 is 63, plus the 4 is 67, okay? So, what we can say is that he uses 6,750 milliliters of water. The next, step, uh, next thing to do is to work out how much uh, fluid slash juice there is. Okay, and this is going to be uh, the sum, so total uh, volume, is going to be the volume of orange squash plus our volume of water. Okay, and this is going to be uh, 6,750 milliliters, uh, actually first we should start with the volume of the orange juice, which is 750 milliliters plus 6,750 milliliters of water, okay? Um, in the corner here, I'm just going to add these using column addition, so 6,750 plus 750, okay, plus 0 plus 0 is 0, 5 plus 5 is 10, 0, carry the 1, 7 plus 7 is 14, plus the 1 is 15, 5, carry the 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, okay? So we're going to have 7,500 milliliters of 
uh, total volume. So this equals 7,500 milliliters. Okay, so the final thing to do is to work out how many uh, bottles. Okay, now we know that one bottle holds 1,000 milliliters. Okay, because one liter is the same as 1,000 milliliters, like this. So, if we have 7,500 milliliters, to find out how many bottles we need, we first need to work out what we times by 1,000 to get 7,500, okay? So this is times what? And this will be 7,500 over 1,000, okay? Because we're dividing by a multiple of 10, all we need to do is move this decimal place, the number of uh, zeros of our denominator. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3 for each of the three zeros. And this is going to become 7.5 times. So we times the left-hand side by 7.5 so we will end up with 7.5 bottles like this but the question said work out the greatest number of one liter bottles that Jimmo can completely fill okay and he can't completely fill the eighth bottle from 0.5 so it is going to be seven complete bottles so we're going to write uh, round down to seven as not enough for eight and therefore our final answer is seven bottles so this uh, question is worth three marks the first mark comes from finding how much water is needed whoops the second mark comes from uh, calculating the total volume, which is 7,500 milliliters. And the third and final mark comes from getting the number of bottles as being seven. We are told the table gives information about the number of points scored by each of 16 students in a game. Okay, so we have the number of points on, one, on the left-hand side and the frequency on the right. Tina worked out the median of the number points, a uh, number of points score to be five. Explain why it is not possible for the median to be five for one mark, okay? So, um, let's take a look. First start, there aren't any, there is a no frequency number for the number of points being scored as five, and it goes up to four, okay? So, the most obvious point to go with is uh, the number of points only goes up to four. So the number of points only goes up to four. This is worth one mark, and you get one mark for any uh, acceptable uh, example. Okay, uh, you could have also said uh, because the median is two, so if you calculated the median yourself, uh, that would have gotten you a mark. And uh, you can say no one scored five points uh, implies the number of points scored was less than five, which is sort of what we said here. Um, the marking was also given some uh, unacceptable examples. So you cannot say she was right since five is a middle number. She has used the wrong column, so if you said that, that is insufficient. You need to uh, explicitly state that uh, it's the number of points only goes up to four. Um, you can't say the median is three, okay? So that would also uh, make you lose a mark for giving the wrong medium. We are then told Tina also worked out the total number of points scored by the 16 students in the game. Okay, here is her working. All right, Tina made a mistake in her working, so she made a mistake in her working to find the total number of points scored. Describe the mistake that uh, Tina made, okay, uh, for one mark. So let's evaluate this. Okay, let's first check that she's done the correct multiplication. Okay, so the first is zero times one, so the number of points times one, that is correct. One times three, one times three, that is correct. Two times five, two times five is correct. Three times four, three times four is correct. And four times three, four times three is correct. So what she has done, she has correctly uh, got the multiplications that need to be carried out to work out the total number of points scored, and she intends to sum them. So that's all good, okay? Now let's check her 
uh, results, okay? So 0 times 1, well, she's written 1 as 0 times 1, and that is not the case, okay? So the uh, mistake that she has made is she has said 0 times 1 uh, equals 0, not 1, as Tina has stated, okay? This part is worth one mark, and you get one mark for a answer, as I've stated here. You could have also said uh, anything times zero is zero, okay, which uh, explains, which says the same thing. Uh, however, you would have not gotten the mark for saying the correct answer is thirty-seven, and it's because the marks, can, the question didn't ask us to work out what the correct uh, number of points scored was. They asked us to identify the mistake she made. Okay, so we have to go through her working to see where she made the mistake. We are told, in a shop, a TV has a normal price of £500. The shop has a sale. On Monday, the normal price of the TV is reduced by one-tenth to give the sale price. On Tuesday, the sale price of the TV is reduced by 20%. Chris wants to buy the TV, and he has £400 to spend on the TV. We have been asked, does Chris have enough money to buy the TV on Tuesday, and we must show how we get our answer. So we can't just give a yes or no, we need to show our working. And this question is worth five marks. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the sale price on Monday. Okay, so I'm going to say sale price on Monday. And this is going to be um, reduced by a tenth to give the sale price, okay? So this is going to be um, 0 0.9 times, uh, sorry, the normal price, like that, okay? So this will be 0 0.9 times 500 pounds, okay? Now, if you're doing 0 0.9 times 500 pounds, this is the same thing as doing 9 times 5, 500 divided by 10, because 0 0.9 is 9 over 10. We can cancel uh, the 10 and the 500 to make this be 9 times 50, which is 450 pounds. So we have sorry, the pound sign here. So this is 450 pounds. So the sale price on Monday is 450 pounds. Um, on Tuesday, the so to work out the sale price on Tuesday, which I will write here, sale price on Tuesday, this will be 20% um, off the sale price on Monday, so it will be 0 0.8 times sales price on Monday. Okay, I'm just going to abbreviate that to SPM. So this will be 0 0.8 times the sale price on Monday is £450. Okay, so it's going to be times 450. Now, to work this out, we are going to have to do um, some long uh, multiplication. Okay, so we will have here 450 times 0 0.8. So the first thing we do, we do 8 times 0, which is 0. 8 times 5, which is 40, 0. We carry a 4. 8 times 4, which is 32, plus 4 is 36. Okay. Um, we will bring a zero here because we're dealing with the next term. Then we have zero times zero, which is zero, zero times five, which is zero, and zero times four, which is zero, like this. Bringing all the numbers down, we have 3,600 like this, but we need to divide our final answer by 10 because we're dealing with 0 0.8, not eight, okay? So this imaginary decimal place comes here, so we are left with an answer of 360 pounds, okay? From here, we can say, Chris has 400 pounds. So right now, right now, we are forming our conclusion to make it uh, rock solid so the examiners have to award us all the marks. So using the information from the question, we're told he has 400 pounds. Um, 400 pounds is greater than 360 pounds. This is the part you have to include. So we are saying that the amount Chris has to spend is greater than the price. And then we can say, therefore, Chris can afford um, the TV uh, on Tuesday.
okay? And in brackets, I'm going to write our final answer of yes, okay? Because it said, does Chris have enough money? So we've come to our conclusion, and in brackets, we're saying yes. So this question is worth five marks. The first mark comes for a... Uh, process to find a tenth of 500 so starting that process so stating that you're going to do 0 0.9 times 500 is your first mark your second mark comes from getting 450 your third mark comes from um carrying out an over uh, starting the process to find 20 percent off the price which is 0 0.8 times um the sale price on monday which is what we have done here your fourth mark comes from getting £360 as the uh, price after Tuesday. And then your fifth and final mark uh, comes from stating that yes with a valid conclusion as I have done here. I've been asked to work out an estimate for 790 times 289 divided by 50. And this question is worth three marks, okay? So, when we need to work out an estimate, this means we need to round to one significant figure okay so we're going to start off by saying that 790 to one significant figure is approximately 800 289 to one significant figure is approximately 300 and 49 to one significant figure is approximately 50 okay so if we're saying we have 790 times 289 all over 49 this will approximately be um, 800 times 300 divided by 50. This is in turn equal to, so we're going to do 8 times 3 first, which is 24. So we have 24 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4 zeros after that, divided by 50, okay? We're going to divide the numerator denominator by 10 because we have a 10 here and 10 here, which we can cancel. So we're going to get uh, 24,000 over 5 and this is where we need to do um, some column multiplication uh, column division so we're going to say uh, 24,000 5 24 into 5 is 4 4 times 5 is 20 we are left with 4 okay we bring down a 0 14 to 5 is 8 8 times 5 is 40 this leaves us with 0 we have another zero to bring down here. Zero into five is zero. Multiply by five is again zero. So we have zero. And finally, bring down a final zero. Divide by five gives us zero again with no remainder, which is great. Okay. So this will leave us with 4,800. And we can write this in our answer space down here. Let me just uh, make that a bit neater. Like that. So this question is worth three marks. The first mark comes from rounding at least two figures to one significant figure, okay, which we have done here. So this is our, whoops, this is our first mark. The second mark comes from a correct calculation using the rounded values, which um, we get here. And your third and final mark comes from getting the correct final answer um, which can be in the range of 4,550 to 4,800. We have been asked to expand x times x minus 4 for one mark, okay? So, the way we're going to do this is we're going to multiply x um, by this inner x and this x by minus 4, okay? So this will be x times x uh, plus x times minus 4, okay? From here, we get x squared plus minus 4x. Now, this plus a negative become a negative, so we have x squared minus 4x like this. Like that. You get one mark for this uh, part, and you get uh, it for a correct answer, as I've given here. Part B has asked us to factorize 15y minus 10 for one mark. Okay, so the way we're going to factorize is we are going to look for the highest uh, common factor between 15y and minus 10. Okay, so we're just going to do this really quickly uh, here. So we're going to say 15y is split into y and 15, and 15 is split into 3 and 5. So this means that uh, actually we'll come to that next, and then we'll say 10 is split into 2 and 5. Okay, so we will say that 15y equals. Uh, 
3 times 5 times y and 10 equals 2 times 5. Okay, the highest common factor is the product of the numbers which overlap. So in this case, the only number which overlaps is 5. So therefore, we'll say, uh, therefore, the highest common factor equals 5. And we can do this by saying that 15y minus 10 equals 5. And then in brackets, we're going to do 15y divided by 5, which is going to be 3y. And we're going to do minus 10 divided by 5, which is going to be minus 2. So we will have an answer of 5 times 3y minus 2. This part is worth one mark, and you get one mark for the correct answer, as I've given here. Part C has asked us to solve 7 uh, times f minus 5 equals 28 for two marks, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our question here, f minus 5 equals 28. We're first going to get that f minus 5 equals 4, and the way we get this is we do... Uh, divide by 7 on this side and divide by 7 on this side. So f minus, so 7 times f minus 5 divided by 7 is just f minus 5. And 28 divided by 7 is 4. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get that f equals 9. And the way we get this is by adding 5 to both sides. So f minus 5 plus 5 is just f. And then 4 plus 5 is 9. So this means that f equals 9. You get two marks for this part. The first mark comes um, from a division of both sides by 7, so it's this step here. And the second mark comes from a correct final answer, as I have given here. We have been given the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence. Okay, these are 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. We have been asked to write down an expression in terms of n for the nth term of the sequence for two marks, okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to rewrite the numbers here, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the difference between term to term, okay? So we're going to say a term to term rule. So here we add 3, here you add 3, here you add 3, here you add 3. This means that there will be a 3n term. Okay, so now to find our constant, we will start with n, our term, 3n, and our term minus 3n, like this. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we have n for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our terms are 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. 3n is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Now term minus 3n, okay? So 1 minus 3 is minus 2, 4 minus 6 is minus 2, 7 minus 1 is minus 2, 10 minus 12 is minus 2, and 30 minus 15 is minus 2. So from here, we can see that the term to term rule is 3n minus 2, like this. And we can just write this in our answer space like that. So, for this question, you get two marks, and you get two marks for uh, stating 3n minus 2, like that. We have been asked to show that 2 and a third times 3 and 3 quarters is 8 and 3 quarters, okay? And this is question is worth three marks. So the first thing we need to do is we need to convert mixed numbers, so as we have been given here, where we've got a whole number and a fractional part, to improper fractions. Okay, so let's do that. Two and a third, well, the way we convert it is we multiply the whole number by the denominator and we add the numerator. So two times three is six plus one is seven. So it's going to be seven over three. Okay, then we have three and three quarters equals three times four, which is 12 plus three, 15. So 15 over four. Next, what we need to do is we are going to multiply uh, multiply improper fractions. Okay? So, we are going to say that we need to do 2 and a third times 3 and 3 quarters. This equals 7 over 3 times 15 over 4. So, notice here we can make a simplification. Okay? So, 3 and 15 can be simplified. If we divide 3 by 3, we get 1. And if we divide 15 by 3, we get 5. Okay? So, this comes from uh, divide them by 3. Okay, I'm just going to include this as a little note there. What this means is we will be left with 7 times 5 over 1 times 4, which equals 35 over 4. Now the next step is to convert this back into, an, uh, to an, into a mixed number. Sorry. 
So, to do that, we first need to know the smallest multiple of 4 that is uh, closest to 35. Okay? So, what this means is we're going to start 4, 8, 12, 16, 30, uh, sorry, uh, 20, 24, 28, 32, and then we have 36 after that, but we don't have enough to get 36 because that's to be less than 35, so it's going to be 32. So this is going to be 32 over 4 plus 3 over 4. Okay? This is our whole number. And this will form our fractional part. This will equal 8 plus 3 over 4, which gives us 8 and 3 quarters. Let me just write that a bit neater. 8 and 3 quarters like that as we have been required by the question. <clears throat> so this question is worth three marks. The first mark comes from um, converting your mixed numbers to improper fractions. Your second mark comes from multiplying out your improper fractions. And your uh, third mark comes from converting your answer correctly into an uh, improper fraction, sorry, into a mixed number as uh, we have been requested to. In this question, we're given a diagram which shows four graphs. Each of the equations in the table below is the equation of one of the graphs, and we need to complete the table. Now, in our table, we have four equations. We have the graph of y equals minus x cubed, y equals x cubed, y equals x squared, and y equals 1 over x. We need to have a rough idea of what each of these graphs look like. Now, we'll start with the graph y equals x squared, because we should be most familiar with this graph. y equals x squared is a quadratic graph. And we know that the graph of y equals x squared looks like the diagram on the right. Now another graph that we might be familiar with is the graph of y equals x cubed, which roughly looks like the sketch on the left. Now you may not have come across the graph of y equals minus x cubed, but if you know what the graph of y equals x cubed looks like, we can use our graph transformations in order to figure out what the graph of y equals minus x cubed looks like. The graph of y equals minus x cubed is a reflection of the graph y equals x cubed in the x-axis. And so by reflecting the graph of y equals x cubed in the x-axis, we get a graph that looks something like this, which is the graph of y equals minus x cubed. Now the last graph is y equals 1 over x, which is a reciprocal function. Now you may not have seen this graph before, but it's important that you familiarise yourself with this graph because it could come up in your exam. The graph of y equals 1 over x looks like this. Well now that we've drawn a basic sketch of each of the four graphs, we can match them to each of the diagrams above. We'll start with the graph of y equals minus x cubed, which looks like this. We can see that graph b looks like the graph of y equals minus x cubed. Now let's move on to the graph of y equals x cubed. Out of the four graphs, graph c is the graph of y equals x cubed. And so the graph y equals x cubed corresponds to the graph c. Next we have the graph of y equals x squared. And we know that graph d is the graph of y equals x squared. And that leaves us with the graph of y equals 1 over x. We know that the graph of y equals 1 over x must be graph a, because graph b, d and c have already been taken. And so we can say that the graph of y equals 1 over x corresponds to the graph a. Now this question is worth two marks, and we get the full two marks for matching each of the four graphs to the correct letter, allowing us to get the full two marks needed in this question. We are told the diagram shows four triangles, so we have A, B, C and D, okay? We are then told two of these triangles are congruent, okay? Write down the letters of these two triangles for one mark. OK, so we first need to understand what congruent means and congruent means same. OK, so we need to look for two of the triangles which are exactly the same. Right. So. Let's start uh, filling in some information from what we know. OK, for triangle A, we know this angle is 55. This angle is 45. This angle OK, has to be 180 minus 55 minus 45. So this is going to be 180 minus 55 minus 45 okay so 55 uh, minus 4 so 55 plus 45 to find the sum of these two angles is 100 so you have 180 minus 100 and this means this is 80 degrees we can't really work out any more angles in this triangle or this triangle but we can in this one 
Okay, so this angle here is going to be 180 minus 80 minus 45. 180 minus 80 is 100, 100 minus 45 is 55. Okay, so this triangle is 55 degrees, like that. So, what can we see here? Well, we can see triangle A and D have three of the same angles. They both have a 55 degrees here, 80 degrees here, and 45 degrees here. On top of that, they have both have a 10 centimeter edge between the angles of 55 degrees and 45 degrees, okay? So, by the rule of angle side angle, um, triangle A and D are congruent, okay? So what we can do is write angle A, triangle A here and triangle D here. Uh, this question is worth one mark and you get one mark for a correct answer. We are told Sean pays £10 for 24 chocolate bars. He sells all 24 chocolate bars for 50p each. Work out Sean's percentage profit for three marks, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, work out how much he made from selling all 24 chocolate bars, okay? So his revenue, okay, which is how much he made... Um, is going to be uh, 24 times, so we're going to, I'm going to work in terms of pounds here because it makes it easier, okay? So this 50p has to be converted to zero pounds 50, like that, okay? Times zero pounds 50. And this is basically just half of 24 with a pound sign, it's going to be 12 pounds, okay? Like that. So... His revenue is £12, and he has uh, paid £10, so his costs are £10, okay? So what we're going to do to find percentage profit, so percentage profit equals uh, revenue minus cost over cost, okay? And because we are working in terms of a percentage, we need to remember to multiply by 100, like this, okay? So, substituting our values in, our revenue was £12, our costs were £10, and again our costs were £10, we're going to multiply this by 100, this equals uh, £2 over £10 times 100, which equals 0 0.2 times 100, like this, and this equals 20%, so the answer is 20%. This question is worth three marks. The first mark comes from uh, finding his uh, revenue, as we have done here. The second mark comes from a method to find the percentage profit, um, which we have started here. And the third mark comes from getting a, a correct answer of 20%. We are told ADC is a triangle. So we have this triangle on our diagram, on our page here. We are told AED and ABC are straight lines and that EB is parallel to DC. Angle EBC is 148 degrees, angle ADC is 63 degrees. We have been asked to work out the size of angle EAB and we need to give a reason for each stage, uh, each stage of our working. Okay, And this question is worth 5 marks. So, the first thing I'm going to begin by doing is just uh, taking a look at that diagram to see how we can work out angle uh, EAB. So, this is going to be our goal, okay? Because EAB, that's our goal there. The easiest way to do this is to um, work out angle AEB and angle ABA and use the uh, rule of sum in a triangle to find uh, EAB. So, let's start by doing that. I'm first going to work out the size of angle AEB. Okay, so we're going to say, one, finding angle A, E, B. Okay, notice because we're referring to the angle, we're going to write angle in front of it. And if ever we refer to the line, we're going to write line in front of it. Okay, so um, if we look at our diagram, okay, a, E, B. Because this, uh, the line A, E is on A, D, because it's a straight line, we're told A, E, D is a straight line, so it must contain A, E. And because E, B and D, C are parallel, the angles formed between the straight line and the parallel lines are corresponding. So what this means is A, E, B and A, D, C are corresponding angles. So what we can say is, um, 
A, E, B and A, D, C are corresponding angles. Okay, and this is because AE is on the line AED. Okay, let's just make that a bit neater. AED, like that. Um, and uh, let's move this full stop. And EB and DC are parallel. Okay, so that is the criteria that are needed for two angles to be classed as corresponding. And then the rule from this is, so what we can say is the implication is that AED equals ADC, like that. Okay, so because we know ADC, so ADC, this angle is 63 degrees, we know that uh, AED equals 63 degrees as well. So, we're just going to add that to our diagram as 63 degrees. Next, we can work out angle ABE. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, 2, finding angle, uh, what do you say, well, sorry, ABE. Okay, now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to first notice that the line ABC is a straight line and angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. Okay, so we're going to start by saying uh, ABC, so the line ABC is a straight line and angles on a line sum to 180 degrees. Okay, um, so what we're going to say is that angle ABE plus, what is the other angle? It is uh, EBC plus angle EBC equals 180 degrees. So we know that angle EBC is 148 degrees. So plus 148 degrees equals 180 degrees like this. We are going to say that ABE equals 180 degrees uh, degrees minus 148 degrees and all we've done is we've subtracted 148 degrees from this side and 148 degrees from this side um, to get from 148 to 180 we first add two degrees to get to 150 and then 30 to get to 180 so this means that ABE equals 32 degrees so we're going to come to our diagram Okay, A, B, A, this is 32 degrees. Okay, the third step is to find uh, angle E, A, B from what we have. Okay, so we, I'm actually just going to do it up here so I don't have to keep scrolling down. I'm going to say 3, finding uh, E, A, B. Like that. Okay, so we're going to say that E, A, B, so E, A, B, plus A, E, B, Oops, uh, plus ABE equals 180 degrees, okay? Um, we're going to substitute our values from our triangles. We can say that EAB plus AEB is 63 degrees, plus 32 degrees equals 180 degrees, okay? 63 uh, degrees plus 32 degrees, well, 60 plus 30 is 90, 3 plus 2 is 5, Okay, so we will have uh, 95, so E, A, uh, sorry, E, A, B plus 95 degrees equals 180 degrees. E, A, B is 180 degrees, oops, 108, let's try that neater, like this, minus 95 degrees. Um, to get from 95 to 100, you add 5 degrees. To get from 100 to 180, that's 80 degrees. So that is 85 degrees like that. And we can say, in conclusion, that um, therefore, angle EAB equals 85 degrees. Okay? And before we finish, we're just going to add some justification to um, our working up here. And we're going to say that uh, angles 
in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Okay, so now we've worked out uh, three individual angles. We've given our justifications for the rules we have used and why we can use those. And we've also shown step by step the maths we have done. Okay, so there's absolutely no place where we can lose marks now uh, because we've met all the criteria for the question. So this question is worth five marks. Your first mark comes from the correct use of corresponding angles to find AEB. Okay, so because there are a lot of marks and they're all over the place, I'm just going to put a little mark next to them to tell you which mark. Uh, comes from which part, okay? So our first mark is for this. The second mark um, is a complete method to find angle EAB, okay? So as we saw, this is a two-step process. Your first step is to find angle ABA. So this is the first part of your second mark. And your second part of your second mark comes uh, up here from using the uh, rules of the triangle uh, to form this equation, okay? So that will get your second mark. Your third mark comes from stating that angle EAB is 85 degrees, okay? We have stated that down here. So this is your third mark. Now, your fourth and fifth mark uh, are both coming from the explanations you have given, okay? So, uh, this is where you have explained uh, why you have used a particular rule, all right? So, for example, uh, the first one we can apply to is by saying that line ABC is a straight line and angles on a line uh, sum to 180 degrees, okay? So, this will get us our fourth mark, okay? Uh, because we've mentioned angles on a line sum to 180 degrees. And then our fifth mark is again the same principle, just elsewhere, and we can apply it actually to where we've written about the triangle, angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Uh, this is enough justification for our fifth mark, okay? Other things you could have said, if you explicitly stated corresponding angles are equal, you would have gotten the mark. Um, if you took a different approach and you were referring to allied angles slash co-interior angles, so um, instead you were looking at the triangle ADC and you ended up working ACD, you would have had to use allied angles or commentary angles. You could have said those add up to 180 degrees. Um, you could have also talked about the exterior angle of a triangle that's equal to the sum of the interior opposite angles if you went down that road. So all of these ones would have gotten you uh, your fourth and fifth mark depending on how you use them. We are told the table shows information about the heights in centimetres of a group of year 9 girls. Okay, so we have a least height of 150 centimetres, a median height of 165 centimetres and a greatest height of 170 centimetres. We're then told the stem and leaf diagram shows the information about the heights in centimetres of a group of 15 year 9 boys. Okay, so we have a stem and leaf diagram here uh, with, along with our K. This question has asked us to compare the distribution of the heights of the girls with the distribution of the heights of the boys. And this question is worth three marks. Okay, so when we are looking at comparing um, distributions, the two things we need to consider are the median as a measure of uh, central tendency and the range as a measure of spread okay so let's first find the uh, median and the range for the girls okay so we're told the median is 165 centimeters so we can just keep that and then from here we can see that our range is 170 centimeters minus 150 centimeters which is 20 centimeters like that now moving on to the boys okay we know there are 15 year 9 boys, so our median position, so median position, is going to be 15 plus 1 divided by 2, which equals 8. Okay, so the 8th data item will be our median for the boys. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our median for the boys is 168. Now, to find the range for the boys, we will take, I'm just going to write it here, the range is going to be the larger, so it's 182 centimeters, oh, so I forgot centimeters here, minus the uh, larger, uh, the smallest for the boys, which is 158 centimeters. Okay, you need uh, two centimeters to get to 160, and you need 22 centimeters uh, to get to 182. So this is going to be 24 centimeters like this. Now all we need to do is 
uh, compare them. Okay. So we are first going to say we're going to talk about uh, the medians first. So we will start by saying um, median height for girls is less than median height for boys and in brackets I'm going to put uh, 165 is less than 168 like that and now we're going to talk about the range and we're going to say um, range for girls uh, is less than the range of boys is less than the range uh, for boys and in brackets I'm going to put uh, 20 is less than 24 okay so for this question you get three marks your first mark comes from finding the uh, range for the girls okay you could have also find the range of the boys or the median of the boys okay so either one of those would have got you your first mark your second mark comes from a correct comparison of the medians and a correct comparison of the ranges supported by correct figures okay so as we have done here so this is your second mark and this will be your third mark In this question, we're given a diagram which shows a prism placed on a horizontal floor. Now the prism has a height of 3 meters, and the volume of the prism is 18 meters cubed. The pressure on the floor due to the prism is 75 newtons per meter squared, and we need to work out the force exerted by the prism on the floor. We're also told that pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. Now this area is equal to the cross-sectional area of the prism. And so we can say that the pressure is equal to the force divided by this cross-sectional area. And you can see that the region shaded in purple is equal to the cross-sectional area of the prism. We need to work out the force exerted by the prism on the floor. And so in order to find the force using the formula, we need to find the pressure and the cross-sectional area. Now we already know that the pressure on the floor due to the prism is 75 newtons per meter squared. And in order to find the force, we need to work out this cross-sectional area. We're told that the volume of the prism is 18 meters cubed, and we know that the prism has a height of 3 meters. And so we can say that the cross-sectional area is equal to the volume of the prism divided by the heights. We have a volume of 18 and a height of 3, and so we can say that the cross-sectional area is equal to 18 meters cubed divided by 3 meters, which is equal to 6 meters squared. Well, now that we know the cross-sectional area, and we know the pressure, we can use these values in order to find the force. If the pressure is equal to the force divided by the cross-sectional area, we can say that 75 is equal to the force divided by 6. And so the force would be equal to 75 multiplied by 6, which is equal to 450 newtons. And so we've found out that the force exerted by the prism on the floor is equal to 450 newtons. Now this question is worth three marks. We get the first mark for finding that the cross-sectional area of the prism is equal to 6 meters squared. We get the second mark for substituting these values into our formula and for saying that 75 is equal to the force divided by 6. And we get the third and final mark for saying that the force is equal to 75 multiplied by 6, which will leave us with a final answer of 450 newtons allowing us to get the full three marks needed in this question. We have been asked to write these numbers in size of, in order of size, sorry. And we have been asked to start with the smallest number for two marks, okay? So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to convert all of these numbers so they are in the same form, okay? And that form will be standard form, okay? So, uh, standard form and our standard form where a is between 1 and 10 notice the strict inequality because it includes every number up until but not including 10 
Okay, so 6.72 is in this form, so that's all good. So to change 67.2 times 10 to the minus 4 into this form, okay, we are first going to divide this by 10, okay? So what this means is it will be 6.72 times 10 to form 67.2 again, times 10 to the minus 4, 6.72 times 10 to the minus 3, because 1 minus 4 is minus 3. 672 is going to be uh, 6.72. Now, because we've got 672, it's times 100 times 10 to the 4. And this is going to be 6.72 times, so 100 is 10 squared, which is, which when you do uh, times 10 to the 4, you have to 10 to the 6, like that. And then finally, 0 0.000672, we have 1, 2, 3, Four, so it's going to be 6.72 times 10 to the minus 4, okay? Now, all we need to do is we need to compare the exponents. So the smallest one is whichever is our smallest exponent, which is 6.72 times 10 to the minus 4. So this is going to be in position 1. I'm not going to write it in yet because we'll need to convert them back. So we're just going to get a uh, placement for each of them and then we'll convert them. Then we have minus 3, which is going to be our second position. Then we have times 10 to the 6, times 10 to the 5. Times 10 to the 5 is going to be in position 3. And times 10 to the 6 is going to be in position 4. Okay? Now we can write this in our answer space. So the first one is going to be 0 0.000672. We are then going to have 67.2 times 10 to the minus 4. We will then have 6.72 times 10 to the 5. And finally, we will have um, 672 times 10 to the power of 4. So this question is worth 2 marks, and you get uh, 2 marks for a fully correct list, as I have done here. You will get 1 mark for three numbers in the correct order and uh, or having four numbers but listed in the reverse order. So you have to listen to the question. We are given that a over b equals 2 over 5 and b over c equals 3 over 4. We have been asked to find a, b, c, a to b to c. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're first going to take a to b as being 2 to 5. And this is because the ratio a over b is 2 over 5. So the ratio a to b is 2 to 5. Okay. Then we will do the same thing for b to c. Okay. So b to c equals 3 to 4. Like that. So to get it in the form a to b to c, the common term here is b. Okay. So in one case it's 5. In one case it's 3. So to find b... We need to find the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3. And this is going to be 15. Okay. So, what we then need to do is we need to take each of our ratios and scale them up. So, B equals 15. Okay. So, if we start with A to B is 2 to 5. To get 15 on this side, we are multiplying by 3, which means this side needs to be multiplied by 3. So, we will have 6. Now, b to c is 3 to 4, and to get 15 on this side, we need to multiply by 5, and multiply by 5 on this side. This will get us 20. Okay, so now we have a, b, and c, and we can write our final answer as being 6 to 15 to 20. This question is worth 3 marks. The first mark comes from uh, setting A to B equal to 2 to 5 and B to C to being 3 to 4, so as I have done here. Your second mark comes from um, you finding the lowest common multiple of uh, whatever B would be, so 5 and 3 to get 15, and scaling up the ratios um, individually. And your third mark comes from a correct final answer. We have been asked to make Q the subject of P equals 6Q plus 7 for two marks. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with P equals 6Q plus 7. 
oops, equals. Now we're going to isolate 6q, okay? So we're going to say p minus 7 equals 6q. And what I've done here is I have um, subtracted 7 from this side and subtracted 7 from this side. And this is going to mean that q equals p minus 7 over 6. What I've done is I've divided by 6 and I've divided by 6, like this. So we will end up with q equals p minus 7 over 6. This part is worth two marks. You get one mark for um, isolating uh, 6q and you get one mark for uh, getting the correct final answer. Part B has asked us to simplify m to the power of minus 2 or to the power of minus 3 for one mark. Okay? To do this, we're going to use the rule that if you have a to the power of x and then in brackets to the y, this equals a to the x y. Okay, so in this case, if we have um, m to the minus 2 or to the power of minus 3, this equals m to the power of minus 2 times minus 3, which equals m to the power of 6. So we can write that in our answer space like that. So this question is worth one mark and you get one mark for the correct final answer.